Topic number two in panel number one is the application of blast load in a building. The speaker is Ali Jahami. Uh, Ali is an assistant professor at Beirut Arab University and a postdoctoral research in blast and impact engineering. Currently, he is part of a research project related to Beirut explosion and the structure, structural related effects. I leave it to you, Ali. Thank you. So first of all, I would like to thank the organizers of this great event. I'm going to introduce a study case related to how to determine blast effects on buildings. So first, I'll start by a quick description of the study case. Then I'll talk about the determination of the pressure generated from blast on different building surfaces like front, side, top, and the rear faces. Then I'll mention the code combination for the designers in order to combine this blast load with other load patterns and the design procedure. And finally, I'll mention some conclusions and recommendations. So our problem consists of a small building with the dimensions of 6 by 6 by 3.1 meters. The building will be subjected to a blast of 100 kilograms of C4 type explosives set at a distance of 27 meters. So before we start, we have some basic assumptions to make. First of all, the building front face is parallel to the blast wave. If we check the figure below, when the stand of distance, which is the distance between the explosive and the building, is close to the building height, then the generated pressures will be distributed in a trapezoidal distribution on the front face of the building. However, when this, when this distance, the stand of distance is too much greater than the building height or with respect to the building height, then we will have a plane wave propagation and the generated pressures will be equally distributed on the front face, which is our case. The second assumption is that, as my colleague Michel, Dr. Michel mentioned, the blast pressure on different building sides is time independent because one of the similarities between blast load and seismic load, for example, is that both of them have time history. So they are time dependent. We are going to use the equivalent static method. So our pressure will be considered as time independent. And the third assumption is that we are referring to the UFC. We mean by UFC code, Unified Facilities Criteria Code, uh, and our problem solving. So this is a schematic view that shows the propagation of blast wave on the front face, and then it expands towards the edges or the boundaries of the front face. Then it starts engaging with the side walls, roof wall, and finally end up with the rear face pressure. So the first step is and since most of the codes and references usually consider the explosive charge as TNT mass. And in our case, the charge is C4 mass. So, so we need to transform this C4 into an equivalent TNT mass in order to be able to continue our uh, solution. So this transformation will be based on the heat of detonation ratio between the TNT and the C4 material. And it can be seen here that 100 kilograms of C4 is equivalent to 130 kilograms of TNT. And subject from this point, we will be dealing with the 130 kilograms of equivalent TNT mass. The second step is to determine the scale distance or the Z factor. This is a scale that relates the stand of distance mentioned earlier, which is the distance between the uh, explosive and the building, to the equivalent TNT mass. It's very important to determine this, actually, uh, factor, since by knowing this or by determining this value, we can enter the UFC code charts and determine all the blast wave parameters. Also, 
if I have two explosions, it's just an example. If I have two explosions, each with different combinations of TNT mass and sound of distance, hmm? these two explosions will produce the same blast waves if they have the same scale distance Z. So, we determined this value, the scale distance, and it was found that it is 5.34 meter per kilogram to the power of three. So, the next step is to define what are the blast wave parameters that we need to determine for our problem. After an explosion uh, takes place, the atmosphere or the free air will experience a pressure diagram as shown here with both positive and negative phase. Each has its peak value. This pressure, the pressure of the free air or the medium after an explosion called the incident pressure diagram. It has a peak value in the positive phase, a peak value in the negative phase, and it has a duration in the positive and duration in the negative. And the area enclosed by each phase is known as the impulse. And all these are parameters that will be determined from the UFC charts, inshallah, as we'll see later. Now, after the wave propagates, it will reach the front surface, it will hit the front surface and then reflects. This will cause an acting pressure on the surface called the reflected pressure or the overpressure, as shown. And this reflected or overpressure this is the design value for us as a designers. This, yeah, we are going to design for this value. And by the way, this is usually from two up to 10 times higher or greater than the incident pressure. Also with similar behavior. It's uh, worth it to mention actually that as per code, for structural design purposes only, we consider only the positive phase of this curve. Yani we only consider this positive phase in our structural design. We do not consider the negative. Hmm? So, okay. The third type of pressures in our interest is what is called the dynamic pressure. You know, after the uh, propagation of the front wave, this front wave will drag the air particles behind it, and this will cause a pressure called the dynamic pressure. Yani, بالعربي هو بعد ما تعمل propagation front الوند بيصير في نوع من الوند بنحس بوند بس تقطع الفرونت ويف هيدا الوند افكت هيدا بنسميه الدايناميك افكت This is a sketch showing different types of waves the incident this is the dynamic pressure the reflected pressure So regarding the reflected pressure and as it expands towards the boundary of the front wall, it diffracts. And this causes this pressure to decay in a high ratio. Hmm? This phenomenon is called the, clearing, the clearance effect, actually. If we check this diagram, for example, final the pressure in green, this is the normal behavior of the reflected over pressure for low peak pressure values. And due to this phenomena, the clearing effect, the red curve showed that this peak value decays in a higher ratio. However, this phenomenon is valid only for low pressure values. Because for high pressure value, the pressure will decay in a ratio or in a time less than the required time for this phenomena to take place. Ali. If you can just uh, yani move quickly after okay. just to be on time. Yani you okay. still have okay. like five minutes, it's six okay. minutes. It's okay, I'm, I'm, like I'm on time, I'm on time, it's okay. So, and that leaves us with two cases, as I mentioned. For low pressure diagrams, we have the theoretical diagram and the idealized diagram proposed by the UFC code. And the second case for high pressure values, also we have the theoretical diagram compared to the idealized diagram. So after I defined all these blast wave parameters, we enter the chart. This is chart provided by the UFC code. The x-axis represents the 
uh, z or the scale distance factor, as I mentioned earlier, and we determine the value as, I guess, 5.64. So we enter the graph, we go up, we have eight curves, each curve for one of the parameters. The parameters are the peak incident the pressure, incident impulse, reflected the pressure, reflected impulse, shock time arrival. We already discussed or described all these parameters. So you go up, you intersect with the curve, you go horizontally, and you get your value. Also, we have other curves using the same manner. We can determine the peak dynamic pressure and the velocity of sound, which help us in some of the calculations. So this is um, a summary for our problem. These are the parameters, and this is the idealized blast pressure on the front surface. We have the peak value, which is 80 kilopascal. Okay? So similar procedure will be followed for both side, roof, and rear wall pressure. They will be, inshallah, available in the document, full document, inshallah, after the, the seminar. Taban. This is like a final sketch sum, uh, summarizing all the results, the front pressure, the side pressure, the roof pressure, and the rear pressure. Now, what's next? Starting from this point, we can deal with this blast pressure as if it is a wind pressure. Okay? So, we transform this pressure into story shears, hmm? and then this, for example, in the second floor, this force F2 will be distributed by the diaphragm behavior of the slab among the structural uh, system elements, whatever the resisting system is, shear walls, framing system. Okay. And as for the combination, as uh, mentioned by earlier by Dr. Michel, the ASCE provide us with a combination to design and to, to combine the blast effect, which is 0 0.9 or 1.2 times that plus the accidental blast. And by the way, this is highly recommend to be increased by 20% due to uncertainty reflections. Hmm? Plus 0 0.5 live load plus 0 0.2 snow load. So this is the design combination to be considered in our work as a designers. Conclusions and recommendation. So we can conclude that the scale distance factor must be defined to determine all blast parameters. This is the key of our solution. The angle of incidence needs to be defined due to its importance. In our case, uh, the blast wave plane was parallel to the front because the distance was 27 meters compared to the height it was three meters. So there is a huge difference. But sometimes when the blast is closer or considered as closed end blast, we need to consider the angle of incidence. And there are some figures uh, to determine these effects. Number three, as we mentioned, the diffraction effect of structural boundaries should be also considered. For structural design purposes, also we consider only the positive phase of the blast pressure. And finally, for complex geometry, definitely it's highly recommended to perform finite element analysis. Yani in case we have irregularities in our structure or we have some curved walls, so it's highly recommended to go for a finite element. That's it. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. Shukran. Uh, I'll take just one question. Hatta man yakhud wakt min the panel number two. Iza hadan gandu shi soal la Dr. Michel aw la Dr. Ali. If anyone is interested to ask any question. If not... Soalain, tayyib. Lan shu. Dr. Asim, and Akshi. Okay, thank you.